De Halverman Bruges Talver beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I have got one here today from Belgium. Bruges to be exact, and it is the De Haverman Bruges Tava beer. Now this has got an interesting history. This was originally brewed by a fella who jumped, I wouldn't say he jumped on the bandwagon, but he revived the tradition of beer being brewed in Bruges made from wheat. Now, of course, Peter Kellis was the, you know, the founding, I wouldn't say he's the founding father of Belgian wheat beer, but he's the founding father of modern Belgian wheat beer. And he sort of kick-started the revival of brewing Belgian wheat beer or Vit beer or Blanche Deer whatever beer. And this brewery here, it was originally called the Golden Boom Brewery. They revived the tradition of brewing beer in Bruges. Now, somewhere along the line, they got taken over by Heineken. And Heineken were brewing this, some concoction of it anyway, and it was called Bruges, and it wasn't the same, as is the case with a lot of these big conglomerates when they take over breweries, they will change the recipe. So what the Harvard man have done, have bought the rights off of Heineken. And I love this, this is brilliant. This is taking it back to its origins. And what they've done is that they've bought the rights off Heineken, they've got this back, this name back, and they've found the original recipe and they're brewing it to the original recipe that it was brewed under in the 90, early 1980s by the De, De Golden Boom Brewery. And this is the result. It's called Blanche de Bruges, Bruges Tava beer. Tava beer actually means Bruges wheat beer. Now, Vit beer, you might think, is, you know, wheat beer. It's not. Vit beer, translated to Flemish, means white beer. It's the same with Weiss beer in German. And that's just purely because of the colour. But Tava beer is actually wheat beer in Flemish. And that's what they've called it here. That's the first time I've seen it on a bottle of beer that contains Belgian wheat beer. And it's quite interesting that this brewery have taken it over because they really are a good brewery. They do the Bruges Zot, they do the Straffer Hendrik stuff. I've reviewed a lot of their stuff on the channel if you want to have a look at that. And this is the wheat beer offering that they do. Now, again, this is why I like them because they've decided not to brew their own wheat beer but they've decided to revive a traditional Bru a Bruges recipe. That's really good. This is a recent beer, this is. This was only done in 2019. And as I say, it was being brewed before by Heineken, but under a different name and a different recipe as well. So this is interesting. So let's stop guessing and let's get this investigated. Right, 330 mil bowl. 5% as far as I know, could be wrong. Yeah, it's 5%. And it, from what I've read about it, it, it is very in keeping with a traditional Belgian Vit beer. It's flavored with coriander seeds and it contains the orange zest that is typical of Belgian wheat beer and it separates it from German wheat beer because German wheat beer doesn't contain any of them adjuncts. Or the only adjuncts that German wheat beers contain is the actual wheat Everything else is Reinheitsgebot stuff. So before this goes warm, let's get it into the glass. There is the cap. 
Now I think that is is a symbol or symbolic of the old brewery. They've put that on there. Let's get into their glass. I do like Belgian wheat beer. I must say I prefer German wheat beer, but Belgian wheat beer is not bad. But this is a problem I do have with it. I can never get it all into a glass because it is so carbonated. Now you can see why it's called a wit beer or white beer because it is very, very light in colour. And just like a German wheat beer, the carbonation is insane. And just like a German wheat beer, it should be drunk through a head like that. Oh yeah, that is fragrant, very spicy. Tons of white pepper, coriander. Coriander is really strong on this, it's really nice. And is you know, the banana and the clove. This actually smells really nice. Now, let's see if they can back up the aroma with the flavor. Cheers. Oh, it's really nice. Very, very good indeed. That has got a ton of flavour in it. In fact, there's a bit of everything in there. Clove, coriander, white pepper. And there's a little touch of sweetness on there too. It's really nice. This is a real good one. Well, wow, that's really fragrant as well. Wow. Oh, this is really good. This is shaping up to be one of the best Vit beers I've tried. It's really good. Now, I recently reviewed Ho Garden, which is the, the daddy of all Belgian Vit beers. But I was very slightly disappointed with it because to me it was very, very sweet. It contained orange in there. That was really sweet. It tasted almost like orange cordial, which to me says they've, they've fucked about with that stuff because it's, it's a massive beer. If anything, I think it's probably a victim of its own success because you can buy it anywhere. In all the supermarkets, you will see Ho Garden and it's brewed on a massive scale. And don't get me wrong, it, it has got a massive tradition, but I think the flavor has been messed with because I don't remember it ever being that sweet. And this is what I remember Ho Garden being like. No sweetness in it at all, just spicy, with fennels and esters coming off of the yeast that's gone into this. But this one, I have to say, it really is superb. Super smooth as well. Really is good. Oh, that is, I have to say, that is probably shaping up to be one of the best I've tried so far. Certainly among the best. Now, there's a few. The St. Bernardus one was pretty good. The Blanche de Brussels I thought was pretty good, even though it was a cheap one. And this stuff as well. That is really good. Here is the label, if you want to have a look. There's the top of the cap. There is the side, if you can read Flemish or whatever. There you go, fill your boats. Yeah, this is really good. I can't really find fault with this.
perfect. That is the perfect Belgian Vit beer. It's got everything a good Vit beer should have and more. Great mouthfeel, very lively carbonation which soon calms down so you get a nice head for it, good head retention. But the flavours and the aromas were coming through on the on the you know the flavours were coming through on the aromas. But the actual taste of the beer, it's got everything. It's got everything I would expect from a Belgian Vit beer, but big. And it's you know the, the white pepper, the coriander, the orange zest. I, sh I should look up the name of the, the oranges, the beginning of the sea. They're, I think they're Mexican oranges or they come from the Caribbean. But they use their them orange peels and they flavour it with that. But the whole lot really does combine to make a very flavoursome and very refreshing beer. This is reasonably cold, but then flavours still just come flooding out despite its cold nature, so it's flavoursome and refreshing at the same time. Absolutely no complaints about that whatsoever. That for me is the perfect Vit beer. So what's the verdict on Blanche de Bruges, Bruges Tarver beer? Insanely good is all I can say about this stuff. And I wouldn't have expected anything less from the Harverman Brewery. They really do some great beer. In fact, I'm just it's just going through my head as I'm saying this. I'm trying to think of a, a bad beer or a mediocre beer that they've done. And I can't think of one. The Bruges Zot, the Straffer Hendrick stuff that they do, and now this. I think they've got the whole range of Belgian beers fucking licked because they do fantastic blondes, fantastic quadruples and triples with the Straffer Hendrick stuff. And this Vit beer just tops it off. Well, it's they call it a Tava beer, which is basically wheat beer, Flemish for wheat beer, but it is a, it's a Vit beer. But it's really good, I have to say. That, for me, is 10 out of 10. It's, it's just perfect. It's got everything. Now, don't get me wrong, there's other good Belgian Vits out there, as I, as I mentioned. But there's others there that just just don't get it. They just don't get it. I've, I've recently done the St. Stephanus. Now, try this and try the St. Stephanus together and tell me that that is shit. I'll fucking defy anyone to say that the St. Stephanus is better than that. I don't want to sound condescending, but if you think it is, and I know it's all individual taste, but I think if, if that's what you think, I really don't think you know Belgian Vit beer. This is just fucking light years ahead of that stuff. But there you go. I mean, I'm comparing stuff from a, a proper brewer, and I'm comparing stuff from a, a, a brewery who's contract brewing for a supermarket. But th th that will just go to show you what, you know, the difference in flavours. People think just Vit beer is Vit beer, isn't it? It's not. There is good and bad in every style of beer, and that is the prime example. But there you go. For me, 10 out of 10 all day long. That is a real winner for me, and I definitely recommend this. This is, for me, the archetypal Vit beer. It's really good. There's others out there, don't get me wrong, some really good ones, as I just mentioned, but this is, I think this is just top of the tree for me at the moment. So there you go. 10 out of 10, recommended. And remember, beer is working class champagne.